Yeah, it was uh, just a tough overall game. And I told someone it's, it's kind of like we gave them a seven-day break and we forgot how to play basketball in all, I, all phases <laughs> of the game. And it was, it was frustrating in the first half because I don't remember a worse first half in West Liberty basketball in, in my 13 years here as a player and coach than, than the first half today. And I don't know why because I think we played our best game in a long time, you know, the game before it came. Mm -hmm. in Tennessee and you know we give our guys seven days off and it's like we forget how to play basketball which is frustrating as a coach and it's you know I thought we had three pretty good days leading up practice wise um, to this game and we knew we were going to take you know Tiffin's best shot and let's not take anything away from Tiffin they had a, a great game plan um, you know I thought they got to the rim very well and you know really exposed our defense in the first half but I thought we buckled down and played you know, relatively good defense in the second half. Um, and, and if you look at the numbers, four of 24 from three for us, and we're still able to win um, against a good Division II school in Tiffin. We'll take that win. And, you know, again, we've got a, a long break right now. We'll give these guys some time off to enjoy the New Year's, and we'll come back and we'll get ready for West Virginia State and conference play. Uh, some of the adversity that you had to deal with, and uh, I, I think it gets overlooked sometimes. Maybe, Marlon, you can speak to this because I think you're the guy that fills the gap. Uh, when when Eric gets in foul trouble, missed uh, half the first half, um, Marlon, your your minutes go up and your role changes and all out. How, how do you accept that challenge as far as stepping up to it? Um, just got to get ready. You know, you never know when he is going to come in the first two, three minutes, he gets two fouls, and then he gets another one, and then it's like, now you got to be in. I was a little tired, but sometimes you just got to push through, tell yourself you're not tired, and just, you know, do what you grew up doing, you know, playing basketball, getting rebounds, and just just playing the game. And, uh, well, it's uh, 23 points. I'm not sure if that's a career high, but it's a pretty good day either way. Um, and I think uh, you came in here with kind of the reputation of the three-point shooter and stuff, but um, you've really, you know, you, you've had a lot of aspects. I mean, you're, you're getting to the boards and getting rebounds and stuff and follow shot. I mean, you're, you're more, almost more <coughs> as much a scorer as a shooter now. Is it something that you constant, consciously worked on, or is that just a natural development? Um, I would say I was when I first started playing. I was a much more of a shooter when I was younger, but just as I got, you know, as I started getting taller and getting bigger, um, I realized I could, you know, use my first step to my advantage, and that's one thing I, I've really been doing. Um, I wouldn't really consider myself like a three-point shooter. I was just more of like a slasher, you know. I'd say like my driving is what opens up like the threes for me. Um, but then as far as like the rebounds, uh, it's just like me, just you know, playing hard and. I know, like, as you know, soon as the shot goes up, you know, it's, if either I'm not getting it, somebody else is getting it, but as long as, like, we're playing hard, someone's going to get it and get a rebound, so. Coach, you were, you came out in the second half pretty strong. Um, throughout the first half, you didn't really get one of your signature runs until the beginning of the second half, yeah. and I think afterwards when you got that run, you didn't relinquish the lead for the rest of the second half, so I think that could have been a huge deal. Yeah, well. I agree. And, and when we went on one of our runs, and, and we typically put teams away mm -hmm. once we do that. But if you remember, yeah. they actually cut it to two. Mm -hmm. uh, we were up ten, and they cut it to two. And um, I, I just thought we were being careless with the basketball. We had guys, you know, guys that typically don't turn the ball over. And some of our seniors were, were doing things that they typically don't do. Um, but I trust those guys, mm -hmm. and, and you know, there's not going to be you know guys that are more focused and practicing next week um, than our seniors because they know they didn't play that good of a game. Um, and again, we're going to ride their coattails. But these two guys, it's funny. We were talking after the game as coaches, and at the end of the game, we were putting the ball in the hand of freshmen, yeah. you know, Yayo Will and, and and Will. We we were putting the ball in their hands and telling them, "Go make a decision," which. That typically doesn't happen a lot in college basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, I think those guys are, are, are just continuing to get better. And, you know, Marlon and I talk all the time and just 
you know, what he can bring to the table. And he brings so much energy when he gets in there. And, you know, Eric obviously struggled tonight. And I think Marlon went in there and probably played the best game he's played at West Liberty uh, in his two years. And, again, the better or the more Marlon plays, I think the better he's going to get. So hopefully this can continue to springboard him in the, in the, in the, into being a better player for us. Will, now that you got your like, first semester under your belt as a um, mm -hmm. retro freshman last year, you got the experience yeah. on the sideline. Yeah. Now you get to play it. So what's mm -hmm. some, just give me some overall comments on your like um, on your first half year here at West Limit. Um, it's going good. I feel like last year I, you know, learned that, you know, practice is important mm -hmm. um, for one thing because that's all I really had, you know, to prove myself in. And I took that very serious as far as like when I was in high school, you know, you know, me being like one of the better players, you know, practice wasn't, you know, it is what it is, you know, just, you know, but when I got to college, I realized, you know, <coughs> that's all I got in freshman year, that's what I have to do to, you know, prove that I can play next year, meaning, this, you know, this year coming up, and I feel like it's worked out pretty well. Um, it's, you know, it's nice to have, you know, a lot of scores around you, because, um, you know, you don't, if you don't have a good night, then, you know, you know, you got other players like Dalton, Eric, you know, we got a ton of scores around, no one really cares who scores, so it's really nice. <clears throat> and, and just one thing um, to add to that, and then you, you sort of addressed it, but uh, just look at the box score here, and you've got uh, two freshman guards with uh, combining for 45 points. And you know, you talk about how young you guys are. You yeah. know, you're starting two freshmen, yeah. two sophomores, and seniors. Yeah. You know, it, they're you know, they're going to get better too. Yeah. And, and I don't think they're done getting better. They played in what are we nine and two? Eleven college basketball games. Eleven. That's nothing. And these two guys, speaking in terms of Yael and Will, their ceiling is extremely high. And it's just a matter of them taking every day and practicing and saying, I'm going to get better. And both those guys do that. Both those guys practice extremely hard. And it's not a surprise to us coaches because we see it every day in practice with these two guys. <laughs>